All right, here's my generator. It's a Briggs and Stratton storm responder, 8250, 5500 watts. Pretty nice generator, but it's been sitting around a while and it does not run and it's dirty and nasty. It's been stored in the in the garage under cover, but uh, still just dirty, dusty, nasty. Uh, the gas smells like nasty. So <clears throat> now is uh, on the mission to correct all that. So I'm gonna clean it up first and then uh, we're just gonna change out the whole carburetor. I've rebuilt it a time or two. It's just time to go, I do believe. And hopefully we can get it running on gas. And then after that, we'll be uh, more fun with the tri-fuel conversion. Hopefully I can get it running on propane and natural gas and gasoline. Okay, to start with this carburetor replacement, First, I pulled the air cleaner off. You can kind of see it laying on the ground uh, there in the background. In my hand, that is a crankcase breather tube. It ripped and torn. It's all deteriorated, so I'll replace that. In the background there, just above my hand, you can see the carburetor and how dirty and nasty it is. So, yeah, it definitely needs replacing. Okay, the air cleaner housing there laying on the ground. It's dirty, nasty. Gaskets kind of... Uh, deteriorated so we'll replace those that little flag piece on the bottom that's the uh, choke control and then there's the inside of that breather again so I'll clean all that up and uh, before I put it back together and just another look at the dirty nasty carburetor there uh, the uh, silver box is OHV overhead valve that hole was where that crankcase breather plugged into so there's the nastiness we're dealing with so it's time to take it off Okay, here's the carburetor. Kind of at the top of the picture is the throttle linkage you can see up there. So that uh, throttle linkage rod just needs to be taken off. And then towards the front, those uh, threaded studs sticking out, that's what holds the carburetor to the uh, intake manifold. You can see they've got a Torx um, end on those studs. It takes a Torx socket. I uh, do not remember what size. It was uh, just one that, uh, come out of a Torx uh, set that I, socket set that I have. But anyway, pretty simple, just uh, unbolt those off. You could probably use a pair of vice grips too if you didn't have a Torx socket. Okay, before I start putting new stuff back on, I took the gas tank completely off the generator cart. It's that black plastic piece that uh, was in some of those other pictures and videos. So it's off and uh, I'm gonna start to clean it out. Here's the tank upside down. You can see the shutoff valve and the gas line that goes to the carburetor. All right, that gas valve plugs into the, uh, that plastic gas tank there with a round grommet. You can see that grommet is cracked nearly in half. So I'm gonna replace the, uh, the grommet, the valve, the gas line, replace everything there as I clean out the gas tank. Once I pulled that valve and grommet completely out of the tank, Again, you can see that big round grommet, how uh, badly cracked and deteriorated it is. And then on the end, there's a little teeny fuel filter that's uh, up inside of that gas tank. But in any event, all that is going to be replaced with brand new. Here is my shiny new carburetor. Um, it only cost 15 bucks I got off of uh, eBay. So I don't know why in the world I was ever trying to rebuild these things. They're so cheap to buy brand new. A um, couple different plastic pieces there for choke controls, I guess, to fit different uh, models. The carb even come with a box of goodies, the spark plugs and gaskets, and some linkage rods there. So a little fuel filter. So lots of goodies with this uh, cheap little carburetor. Okay, new carburetor bolted up to the intake manifold. You can kind of see at the top of the picture, I uh, reconnected the linkage, and then you can see those same studs. Uh, just screw those back into the intake to bolt that carburetor up. Couldn't be much simpler. All right, everything is put back together to be able to run on gas. Uh, you can see the brand new carburetor there. You can see the uh, linkage rods coming off the top. Uh, the air cleaner is bolted back on. That little uh, black flag-like piece at the uh, top is the choke control it's back on and then the brand new crankcase breather that i mentioned um, crankcase breather tube that i mentioned earlier it's back in there now i did not get a video of uh, cranking it up to run on gas i cannot believe that i forgot to do that i was so excited to get it back together but it cranked up literally on the second pull 
after six to eight years of not running at all. So I don't know why I never did this before, but I didn't. But uh, next comes the uh, propane and natural gas conversion. And I will have videos uh, of running on those two mediums. All right, this is the conversion kit from Century Fuel Products to convert the uh, gasoline generator over to propane and or natural gas. All right, every generator is going to take a different kit depending upon model and carburetor and all those different things. So it doesn't behoove me to put a link in there for that. But uh, Century Fuel Products, maybe I'll just put a link in the description for their main page. But uh, this kit was absolutely complete to hook up for propane. So everything you need to hook up for propane, except for the propane tank bottle. Um, did need one more line to connect up for natural gas, but we'll take a look at that when we get there. So just a little display of those parts. All right, this is the Venturi that's going to allow the generator to run on either propane or natural gas. Uh, I like this one. This is like a billet aluminum. Uh, you see another popular products that have a snorkel, and that's going to block your choke. Um, these things need chokes to, to start the first time often. So I like this design much better than uh, several of the others I've seen out there. In this picture, um, I've already screwed in. Uh, there's a 90-degree elbow that comes in the kit. Um, put the uh, line on it that's going to connect to the carburetor and a hose clamp. Again, every bit of that was in the kit. Didn't need to buy any of that extra. And just the side view of that Venturi, again, you can see his billet aluminum. You can see that uh, elbow coming off the top and then kind of holding onto the hose there in the background. So now to mount that Venturi onto the carburetor, you can see there's uh, some longer studs coming off the carburetor now. If you, uh, from the other pictures, they are really short with the Torx end on them. Uh, the kit comes with those two adapters that thread over the top of that, just like it, uh, the nut used to be there for the air cleaner housing. So you just thread both those extensions on, uh, put another gasket that came also came with the kit, and then that's ready for the Venturi to mount. Now the Venturi's slid onto those studs, uh, just like uh, the air cleaner housing did. Couldn't be any simpler. You just slide it up into place. And then you can see off the bottom again that 90 degree elbow coming off and that hose coming off the bottom there that's going to go up to the gas regulator that we'll take a look at next. And then you just put one more gasket on the uh, face of that and then the air cleaner housing bolts right back up to that. Just could not be any simpler. And finally the air cleaner bolted up to the uh, propane gas venturi which is connected to the carburetor. Uh, and the crankcase breather is back on, so uh, all that is set up and ready for the uh, next steps. All right, now the main gas valve install, and there's a lot of steps here. Maybe I kind of skipped without taking any pictures, but you can see I bolted the valve to the uh, generator cart. Just a couple bolts there. The ones they supplied are kind of long, but I don't think it matters. I could always change them if I uh, decide I need to. At the top of that valve, it looks almost like a... Um, a T, but that's just a 90. That's where the line from the carburetor uh, Venturi that we just installed is going to connect to. On the sticking off the top of that is an adjustment valve to uh, kind of adjust the gas flow to make sure the generator runs uh, smoothly and, and runs co correctly. Um, you can see the yellow there where that threads into the uh, threads into that regulator. That's Teflon tape. Teflon tape made for gas. So that is uh, to help seal those connections. And then on the bottom of that regulator, you can see there's a large elbow um, that, uh, that threads into that regulator and then another fitting that threads into the elbow. And then that is going to connect to the gas line that either comes from our propane tank or comes from our natural gas valve. So again, all that was included in the kit. Um, all pretty simple to uh, just to screw together and bolt on. And so now we're ready to make some gas connections. And now just a slightly different angle. You can see the line comes up from the carburetor. It's just kind of out of the picture uh, behind that uh, gas valve. But it comes from that carburetor venturi that we just installed. It loops around and then connects back up to the top of the valve. And then now all we have to do is connect the gas line to that uh, elbow on the bottom of the valve. 
Now, the propane tank is connected and we'll show that in a live video in uh, just a second. But before I crank it up, uh, pressurize the propane through all that line and then I'm spraying soapy water on all the uh, connections uh, to see if we get any bubbles. If no bubbles, everything's fantastic. If you got bubbles, then you got a leak and it's time to stop and figure out why before we go any further. But no leaks for me. All right, here is my propane conversion for my normally gas-operated ge generator. Um, this generator is a, uh, it's a Briggs & Stratton storm responder. 5,500 watt, 8,250 uh, surge watts, I guess. Uh, not that any of that matters, but uh, that's what it is. It's an older uh, model. I think I bought this in 2008. Uh, when uh, Gustav hit us and we were out of power for a week So really tired of running on gas or having to deal with gas um, I just uh, Replaced the Carburetor. I don't know if you can see that. It's just uh, a lot of a lot of dark dark Darkness there you go. maybe a little bit better there, but I just replaced the carburetor um, It would not run on gas any longer. I've rebuilt the thing two three times and uh, I cleaned out the gas tank, uh, replaced that gas valve, which for uh, future reference is in the off position. So there is, we're not gonna be running on gas. Um, so this, uh, I did this propane conversion kit, pretty nice little kit, got from Century Products. Got a regulator there and uh, connect to the uh, propane tank back there. And then, we can get back in we may have to go to the other side again i'll have some pictures uh with this video you may have already seen by this time but uh right back in here this uh blue thing there that is the adapter that goes on top of the carburetor between the carburetor and the air filter for the propane and then this is the regulator for that Connected to that uh, little valve on the carburetor and then connected back to a standard barbecue propane tank. Uh, I will eventually connect this up to my natural gas. Um, back here I've got a natural gas grill and a natural gas stub out back there. So I'm going to eventually connect to that for future use. But... Uh, just doing the test run for the propane to make sure that I've got proof, proof of concept. So there we are. I'm gonna go see if I can get her to start up. So on, little shot back here. We'll try it without the choke first, see what happens. So fire right up on propane, no choke, no nothing. That's the beauty. I got no more worrying about nasty, dead, stale gas between uh, hurricane breakouts. And uh, it'll still run on gas if I need it to. Uh, I can run it on propane. And next will be the natural gas. Okay, here's my gas connections. <clears throat> As you saw from pictures before, there used to be, hey, okay. there used to be uh, just an elbow here with the uh, pipe coming off and a valve and a quick disconnect uh, to connect up my grill. So I just changed that elbow to a T fitting, um, added another uh, little piece of pipe, added another shutoff valve, a little bit longer piece of pipe, and then a quick disconnect. So that's what I'm gonna hook up my uh, generator to. Um, of course, you need to shut off the gas at the meter before you do all this kind of stuff. And I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't have a little bit of confidence in my skills working with uh, plumbing and gas. But there is my connection. Okay, final connections for natural gas. <clears throat> 
All right, everything else is the same. Just got a line that uh, runs from here to uh, my natural gas valve that we showed you earlier. So I got a uh, the quick dis disconnect on this line. <clears throat> so first, uh, we're going to turn this gas on, pressurize that gas, <clears throat> and then this is my uh, this is my soapy water concoction. So uh, we're just going to go a little spray. <clears throat> We'll come back over here, make sure we don't have any leaks. A little shot there, a little shot. And so, no bubbles. They're big bubbles. If, uh, if you've got a leak, that soapy water will make some big, big bubbles. So, <clears throat> no leaks. We are pressurized. We are connected and we are ready for liftoff. So let's see if I can set this here to where we can see. Okay, <clears throat> let's test. Back here, give a little shot of gas and pull. And the generator dies. So we have completed our tri fuel conversion. Uh, we can run on uh, gasoline out of that tank, and we can run on either propane or natural gas off of this regulator. Wow. I am happy, happy. Huh.